Yeah, hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. Oh, we've done the tier sixes, we did the tier sevens, we've done the tier eights, and we finished the tier nines of the worst performing tanks in Blitz. And now we get to the big boys, tier ten. Starting our little journey with that of the worst performing tier ten light tank. Now I get a lot of hassle over this. People saying to me, oh, but Fuji, this is a great tank. Guys, this isn't my opinion. I don't think these tanks are necessarily bad. This is purely based on Blitz stars and what the player base is actually doing in these tanks. So at tier 10, the worst performing light is, by all accounts, this little beastie, the Batchat 25T. Don't take my word for it, like I said. Blitzstars is where I get this information, and voila, that's what Blitzstars is saying. The Batchat 25T has a win rate of 48.32%, marginally worse than the Sheridan, which does surprise me. But, but, I know a lot of people play the Sheridan, but the thing is, a lot of people play the Batchat. So what is the issue there? And as you can see, the Vickers and the Alt have both got 50, 50 and 51% respectively. So why are people struggling in the bat chat? Well, a big indicator is when you look at the survival, 28%. Compared to the others which are pushing over 30, that sort of tells you something. That tells you that the player base just isn't comfy with, firstly, its armor, and secondly, the way that the tank should be played. I'm also looking at the damage per battle, 1,600 for the bat chat. All the others are over 1,700. And that is with the shocking DPM of the Sheridan. Now the T100 LT I can understand, the Vickers I can understand, but what I can't get my head around is how the Sheridan is dishing out more damage per battle than the Batchat, especially when you compare their DPMs. Kills, while well, the Batchat again is struggling, and it's also struggling with its spots. What is going on here? I mean, I like the Batchat 25T, funnily enough, I think, it's, I think it's a great little tier 10. But the player base obviously has other ideas. What we're going to do, we're going to therefore deep dive into this one, as I said before. Now, this is part of the Masterclass series that we're doing. Not aimed at the new players, certainly not aimed at the most experienced and pro players out there. This is aimed at those intermediate players who are struggling. They're struggling to improve their win rate or they're struggling in certain tanks or they're struggling to get to that next level of their gameplay. We're just here to sort of give you a few little hints and tips on how you can get more effective in tanks such as these. It's also there to try and help the tanks because these tanks, as I say, are not necessarily bad tanks. We as a player base are just playing them badly. So without any further ado, let's jump into the parameters of the tank. So here we are with the parameters of the Batchat. And automatically you can see two things. Firstly, it's an autoloader. And secondly, it doesn't have massive amounts of hit points, 1,800. You can also see from the armor profile, on the front it only has 70 millimeters, on the turret 80 millimeters, on the hull sides and the rear of the turret are 50 millimeters respectively, whereas the hull is 40 and 30 respectively. This thing is quite prone to HE. Let's not kid ourselves from a really decent shot on things like a 183 or a Jaeguru or even a Griller. This thing will be sliced in half. View range is quite good, just under 310 meters. But then again, I'm playing it with optics. It is a light tank. That's what's increasing that view range. Cavalry concealment, wow, well, while moving in stationary, it is 55%, and upon firing, it is 11%. It's a light tank, um, it, it's always going to have really decent camo. Moving down, DPM 2837, that's 200 better than the Sheridan, which, if you remember, has a better damage per battle than this little tank. Crazy, eh? Magazine reload time, 14 seconds, and that is where a lot of people come unstuck. 14 seconds is a long time, let's not kid ourselves here. Into clip reload, that's the shells one, two, and three, is 2.8 seconds. Again, that can seem like an eternity, but there are ways to bring that down. Shells in the magazine, there are three, clearly. Armor piercing, this is your penetration. You're gonna get on your APs 252, on your heat 325, 
and on your HE only 58. Now, cast your mind back to tanks like the RU, which has like 118 on its HE. This one does struggle to pen with its HE, unfortunately for it. Especially when you start looking at, there's quite decent damage coming out on its HE. Damage, well, you're going to be knocking out 310 on its AP, 260 on its heat, and 380 on its HE. Now, that's per shell. So if you work it out, 310 times 3, if you land all 3 shots, ain't too shabby. I mean, that's 930 you can dish out in a clip if you land all those shots and if you get those max rolls. Aim time is 2.6 seconds, not too bad. Dispersion, uh, it's, 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 it's not the best. I mean, 0 0.330, not particularly good. Gun depression, 6 degrees going down. <gasps> That's horrendous. And 11 degrees going up. Maneuverability, well, this is a light tank, and boy, is it quick. 65 kilometers going forwards, 23 going backwards, with an average speed of 48. Again, you have to remember, there are certain things I've got loaded, equipment-wise, provisions-wise, that make it a little bit niftier. Terrain crossing ability, not too bad either. 121% on the road, 109% on the in the, on the ground and just 98% in the water. So by the looks on it, it's not actually a bad tank. So where is everybody struggling? Well, that's what we're here to show you. And most people struggle with the following. The armor. The armor is the biggest killer's heel of this tank. It is, well, paper thin. Don't get me wrong, you will get those troll bounces, uh, especially when you're sort of running away. People try and smack you, and they generally bounce here. These are just battle zones. But for all intents and purposes, the bat chat is paper thin. When it's angled like this, again, you're going to get those troll bounces. But nine times out of ten, it's just going to be sliced in half. It's just that straightforward. This is it facing a Type 71, the go-to heavy tank in the game at the moment. The tank that is clearly the meta. So with that in mind, you have to be careful of the fact that it is, oh, by the way, good depression, six degrees, going all down, does it help? Well, it helps a little bit. I mean, you're gonna see it like this. You can get bounces here, but the turret is still wide open, so it doesn't really do much for you. So that's one problem. There's another problem with the tank. And we're going to jump into that problem also. And we're going to see how to overcome that problem. Because that problem is with these guns. So, as you can see here, it's an autoloader. And that creates problems for some of the player base. Because they're just not used to playing autoloaders. It's, it's just like that. And they forget that they have to run away and wait for that clip, that magazine, to reload. And... Whilst you're reloading that magazine, you in your little bat chat are incredibly vulnerable. It's just like that, guys. But you have some indicators of how you should be playing this tank. You have fantastic mobility. So if you've got good mobility, good terrain crossing, good turns, etc., etc., this is sort of telling you this tank needs to be mobile. This tank needs to use that mobility when it's on that long reload. It's also very small, very squat. It's not as squat as the T100LT, I, I agree, but it is pretty small in squat, which means it can hide behind things like boulders and rocks. And that also is one of the things that you need to learn how to do in a bat chat. Let's have a look at some equipment and see how we can try and get the most out of this tank. So this is my equipment loadout as it is at the moment. I've got calibrated showers. However, personally, you know, I swap between the two. Okay. Sometimes I use the improved ventilation. That just makes everything a little bit tighter in there. Gives me better view range. Makes the crew work a little bit harder. Gives me more DPM, etc., etc. And sometimes I switch it to the calibrated shells because I'm trying to get those penetrating shots. And calibrated shells just gives you that little bit of more peace of mind that you're going to get them. I am running the defense system because I don't want to be, uh, you know, that there's. I want to reduce the risk of engine damage, reduce the risk of crew injury, and all that sort of jazz. I'm then running the improved optics. There is literally no point in me running a camo net, to be honest with you. I want the view range on this thing. I want to be able to spot from distance and then run away. I've already got pretty decent camo, to be honest with you. I mean, 55% is not too bad. 
I'm then rolling down and I've got the enhanced gun lane device, just reducing that aim time a little bit further. As usual, I'm using the improved assembly. It's only 102 hit points, but believe me, 4% of nothing is still 4% of nothing. So with this kind of tank, what's the point of having increased armor of 4%? It doesn't give me anything. Whereas the hit points just gives me just a little bit more. It's just, you know, I may get lucky. You never know. I've then got the engine accelerator rather than the improved control because it gives me a better speed and gives me a power, better power to weight ratio. Then using the vertical stab, again, bringing that aim time down. I've then got the toolbox because, and the eye end consumables. Moving over to the consumables, I'm running this at the moment with the multi restoration restore pack because why wouldn't you? I've then got a, another repair kit because I don't need the speed boost. I certainly don't need the fire extinguisher or the first aid kit. And then I've been toying around with the shower reload boost. Admittedly, I don't use it as often as I should, but I have been playing around with it. I have been trying to get used to it. And it is actually a very nice addition to this little bat chat. It just reduces that interclip reload. Moving over to the provisions. Well, at the moment, um, I'm not running it with improved fuel. I don't know why it's showing that. I'm actually running it with a small liner. So <laughs> I just need to replace that. Um, I was just toying around with it the other day. So what I've got for my provisions at the moment is a protective kit, obvious reasons. A spore liner, because this is prone to HE, and that spore liner reduces that damage. And like I said with the Batchat 25T AP, if you're not running a spore liner on these HE prone tanks that have a spore liner, then you are crazy, because you really do need it on these type of tanks. And then I've got coffee and croissants want to make that crew work that little bit harder moving over to my ammunition loadout well i've got 27 ap 15 heat and 6 he why only 6 he why you saw the penetration isn't that great and the chances are i'm not going to be able to pen anything other than grillers etc etc so there's only two magazines worth loaded up so that's my loadout as we stand at the moment and like i said these are not perfect this is not exactly what you should be running guys this is me experimenting and i experiment all the time i keep chopping and changing changing and chopping so you have to get comfy with your style of play on what equipment loadouts what provisions and what consumables you want to roll out with anyway let's jump into a couple of games with the bat chat and let's see how we can get the most out of this tank this is us in the bat chat rolling out on naval frontier now a couple of things about this game firstly i'm not going to be setting any records in this bat chat i'm showing you this replay because i want to show you what the bat chat is capable of doing okay so this isn't about doing massive kills or massive damage this is about showing you the tank and how you can get the most out of it so i've taken it up here to try and get some spots thinking because normally you will get something and they have got a light tank or two however we see a crown wagon out in the open so we give him a bit of a smack there's nothing come this way um so that allows us to push over a little bit now that tortoise is utterly focused on me so i'm just going to pop around the corner he's going to smack me i'm going to smack him back that wasn't a great trade i fully admit and that is a shot that is wayward so I'm going to sit here, I'm going to try and reset that camo and try and reload at the same time whilst trying to stay safe. What happens next is the reason why I'm showing you this replay. I've now got two tanks going to chase after me. There's the T91 and there is their other bat chat. So I'm waiting for them to go underneath and then I'm going to literally run away. And that, what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to sucker them to follow me. Okay, I want them to follow me. I'm taking them out of the game. They're not putting shots down and I'm using the mobility of the bat chat to ex to do that exactly. Oh look, we catch the tortoise off guard, put a shot into him, somebody finishes him off. Come around the corner and there's a yo, put a shot into him, that's nice, put another one in, we only track him. And then the tanks that were chasing me earlier are now carrying on chasing me, so run away, reload. This is what you should be doing in the bat chat stay mobile at all costs now we got we, we lost a few hit points there but we got away with that and we dragged a couple of tanks out of the game 
And this is one of the ways that the bat chat shines. That mobility is fantastic. The gun on the bat chat is actually really, really nice. And as long as you've got somewhere safe to hide whilst you're doing that reload, you are going to have very, very good fun in this tank. I mean, I love the bat chat, as I said. I mean, I put the HE in there just to prove to you that it's not as good as it should be. But we've had a great time. Okay, we have only knocked out 1600 damage. But what I've managed to do is get a lot of assistance damage here. I've taken two tanks out without even shooting them. You know, took them out of the battle, and that was fantastic. Unfortunately, Effa lumped my long suffering teammate, absorbs my shot, and then gets blasted by the E100. We finished the game on 1800 there. We only take one kill. But the thing about the bat chat is that mobility is beautiful. And as long as, oh, we did 2000 damage actually. And as long as you stay active and mobile, you will be able to do some great things in this tank. And that is why I think the bat chat is just not played correctly. Okay, I mean, we got third damage there. Ephelim Paneer's bat chat did 4k. And I don't care what anybody says, doing 4k in a bat chat is pretty nice. Both of us there exceeding, firstly, the amount of damage per battle that the average player base is hitting on this thing. Don't underestimate the bat chat. And certainly do not underestimate the bat chat in the hands of a good player. Because these guys can throw it around the map and boy, they can put a lot of pain out there very, very quickly. And as I said, one of the tricks of the bat chat, stay mobile. Don't, by any stretch of the imagination, stop or stand still, because you are just a big, massive magnet. Let's jump into another game and let's see, you know, if we can look at other ways to play of the bat chat. Now we've jumped into Faust, a map that the Bat Chat actually likes. It's a big map. It's a map that the Bat Chat can work around. We're heading up towards the A cap. We're expecting on the grounds that they have got a light tank and two TDs, that there's going to be something around here. And there is, there's a Badger. So we're not going to push around the corner. I mean, that would be just plain suicide. So we're going to look at well, what can we do. So I say to Ephelump, who is uh, covering that corner there, that I'm going to drop down. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to bait the Badger, okay? I'm going to just bait him. That's going to allow my Toon Mate to put shots into him. And whilst I'm baiting him, I'm going to try and get shots in as well. I mean, this is just terrible shot by me with the heat ammunition because I should have just gone over and aimed for his bottom plate. Ethelum does get a good shot in though. There we go, we get one into the bottom plate. He's going to turn side on. We don't need the heat anymore. Swatch it to 8B. We get some good stuff there. And then their bat chat comes around. Now, I expected him to be there a lot earlier. He gets a good shot into me. And myself and Ephelum totally missed him. Ephelum turns around to take him down. He gets a good shot in. But before we can load anything up, the uh, the Jaeger puts a massive roll in and uh, Ephelum takes him down. What we're now going to do, we're now going to push on to them. This is how the bat chat really shines. That mobility is just amazing. The thing is, like I keep saying, you've just got to make sure that when you're reloading that magazine, you are either A, in a position of safety, or B, you are mobile. In other words, nobody can really put shots on you. So I'm just going to wait here to see what this E5 does. I'm not spotted as of yet. I will be spotted in a moment. The E5 is not concentrating on me, so we can start to get some good shots into him on the side. And as long as you empty your clip in the bat chat, you are dishing out close to a thousand damage, as long as you're hitting those big rolls. So we've done some good stuff there against this E5, gave him a bit of pain. Unfortunately, you know, I get in the way here a little bit of the STB, my bad. I did say sorry to him after the game. Um, just, I was trying to sort of maneuver to put shots into the E5, and I all then get in the way of Ephelump. Um, but that generally happens, there wasn't a block on purpose. So I did apologize to the chap and say, look, I'm really sorry for that. Yeah, I was so caught up in the moment, I thought you were gonna go around me this way, but you went that way, so really sorry, uh, my bad. Now we're going to reload. we stayed safe. We're now going to push towards the E100. Oh, he just manages to turn his turret. So we're looking at the bottom plate now. I'm not going to push down onto him. I'm going to try and keep farming his bottom plate, which we do. We're now at 2,700 damage. And then I inadvertently drop off. 
<laughs> because that happens. But that worked out nicely for me. Ephelop's going to push on the E100 because he's almost loaded. It gives me time to reload and pull round. You can see here, by all means, we haven't won the game yet. I mean, it's two against two. We've got a very healthy Leo and a not so healthy IS-7. Now, I was in voice with Ephelump in this game and I said, I will go after the IS-7. And Ephelump said, fine, he's staying at the back to reload. I'll put one into the IS-7, take him down. Now, the Leo completely ignores me, allows me to get around the back of him. And I'm just going to push him. I'm going to try and reload. Ephelump also puts his shots in. And this is where the bat chat, when they doubled up like this, the, the amount of DPM is just huge. I say to Ephelim, I'll chase him round. Ephelim says, great, I'll corner him on the other side. So this poor Leo hasn't got a hope and house chance. If I'm not going to get him, Ephelim's going to get him. And Ephelim is fully loaded, and there you go. We do over 3,500 damage there. We bounce 310. That was more luck than judgment. And we take a couple of kills. I mean, that, well, we take a kill. Now, that I like, and that just goes to highlight why the Bat Chat is such a beautiful tank. And by the way, we get a second class there for our troubles. So, you know, the Bat Chat isn't as bad as everybody makes out. It's not the best credit maker, however. Nephilim again, knocking out 4,363 damage compared to my 3,586. But together we take five kills, and together we do shy of 8,000 damage. That, to me, is an effective game. We were able to use the mobility of the bat chat, and we were able to stay relatively safe. And that's the trick, guys, with the bat chat. Just want to show you one more replay. This time we're in the bat chat, and we're on Winter Malinovka. And I want to show you why people generally struggle in this tank. So, we go to the spot in position. We're not going to go much forward than this. Now, their bat jet gets caught in the open, and already he's lost a thousand hit points. Uh, we tried to put another shot in, but he drops down. Now look, I could push down onto those projectos, and so could Ephelim. We're not going to do that. We're going to turn around, and we're going to hightail it back to our spawn. That is resetting our camo, number one. I'm then going to also reload the full magazine. I'd only fired one shot. This is giving me time to reload reset the camo and get back to a nice position. Their presettos have now pushed. So we're now here able to put a lot of pain onto that projetto. Admittedly, I should have dropped the interclick reload there. I didn't, but we've already done a thousand damage. Again, not gonna stay around here. I can see that the AMX 50B is pushing. So, and we've got them pushing through the middle. So we're dropping that, uh, we're reloading that magazine and we're trying to get out of uh, out of dodge, out of the danger zone, to put some pain on. Nice bounce there, because as I said, when you're running around in this thing, you can bounce. Here comes the 50B, he's obviously on his long reload. He's been caught out completely, and boom, down he goes. 1400, now we've put a lot of damage out there. Admittedly, we've lost two tanks, but we've put a lot of damage down. We've taken out their 50B, we've whittled down their bat chat, and whittled down one of their projettos. They're not in a great position now, okay? It's as simple as that. And what we've been doing, instead of doing what the majority of the player base does, which is in that position earlier, see those projettos, leg it to them and try and brawl with them. We didn't do that. We turn around and ran back. And that's how we became more effective. So I reset the camo, got the magazine loaded. Hopefully you can get a shot on that projetto. No, he goes behind the hill. So I'm going to slowly, slowly stay behind this building that will keep my camo, pop round, and there's an object, hello object, now I'm spotted, but I'm going to be able to empty a complete magazine into him, with impunity, and there we go, 2,500 we've dished out now, we are having a good time, we're still not winning this game, but we can see that most of their tanks are, well, their object is now very low, and uh, Ephelum takes him down, that gives me the opportunity to push, so I'm going to push round, hopefully there is the O, put one into him. Now use the mobility of the bat chat to get round this Yo, put another one into him. He gets one into me, maybe a third one, and then, yep, third one, and then get round the corner and just hightail it out of there. He's now one shot, down he goes to my two mate, Ephelum. There's their other bat chat, sorry, there's their bat chat. I'm on 3,400. Going to push down onto him, get a shot into him. He clearly did not reload his magazine. And I'm going to ram him just to make sure. Finished the game on 4,374. Bounce. 
380. And we did quite a bit of quite a bit of nastiness there, you know. And this is the way to play the bat chat. Two kills. Happy with that. The game's only a second class, but I don't care. We won the game. And this is the thing about the bat chat. You've got to stay mobile at all times. And you've got to resist that temptation to YOLO in until you are ready to make that move. And for once, I did more damage than my long-suffering teammate, Ephelump. And, you know, this is the way to play the bat chat, guys. Play it conservatively and only, only rush when you absolutely need to. And you saw there, the only real risks that we took with the bat chat, both myself and Ephelump, were towards the tail end of the game when we knew that we could take down both the Yo and their bat chat. Until then, we played conservatively. We retreated where we needed to, got ourselves back to better positions, reset our camos, and that is what you need to consider with the bat chat. You hightailing it straight to the front line is gonna get you nowhere fast other than the garage. And I said in one of the videos the other day, your hit points are one of your most precious of resources. Once they're gone, you can't get them back. You can't restore them. You need to protect those at all times. Like I said, I like the Bat Chat. I think the Bat Chat is a fantastic tank. In fact, it's one of my better, in fact, it is my best tier 10 light tank. I really struggle in tanks like the Sheridan, if I'm being honest. I also struggle in tanks like the T100LT, whereas the Bat Chat suits my style of play, whereby it forces me to relocate. It forces me not to brawl. It forces me to find those positions of safety. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. And a lot of the player base struggle with this tank purely because they have issues with the fact it's an auto loader. They have issues with the fact that it's got no armor. But it's the auto loading side that most people struggle with with the bat chat. And it's a shame really because as we've just seen in the replays, it's a beast of a tank when in the right hands. And I love it. And, you know, it, it shocks me to know that this is the worst performing tier 10 light because I really do think that's an injustice for the tank. It's a fantastic little tank. But anyway, who am I to know? I mean, the player base clearly are struggling in this thing. And, uh, you know, it's not like they, they need to grind for something bigger and better. I mean, the bat chat is the last in the line. It is just a misunderstood tank. And therein lies your problem, like I say in a majority of these videos. The tank primarily is not to blame. The player base is to blame. We as players generally are playing the bat chat incorrectly. And when we play it incorrectly, it then transforms and translates that into its overall stats. For, uh, you know, just about 48% win rate in this thing does not give it justice. It actually does an injustice. And don't forget, I mean, Wargaming have tinkered with this recently. And whilst I consider that the gameplay is still the same and the parameters of the tank haven't really changed, well, Wargaming have tinkered with it and hopefully the player base are going to start loving it a little bit more. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been the Tier 10 French Light, the Batchat 25T. A beautiful tank. But I don't, you know, that's just my view. I want your comments below. I want your thoughts, your feelings, your views on this. I love the tank. Do you love the tank? Do you hate the tank? Do you struggle in the tank? What do you think, you know, is the primary problem that you face in this tank? I'd love to hear from you. And until the next time, guys, remember, it's only a game. So, like, you know, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it is all about having fun and being happy.